A thousand years later, near York, in the middle of the old Danelaw, the postman still delivers letters to places of Norse origin. Many of the names are based on simple Viking words. Toft for a plot of land, as in Lowestoft. Thwait, meaning a clearing, as in Micklethwait. Thorpe for a settlement, as in Gowthorpe or Yulethorpe. He passes the Beck, Viking for stream, into a village called Kirkby. B means a farm. Kirkby means the farm by the church. Today, the postman is visiting a farmer of Norse descent named Erwin Bealby. The postman speaks with a typical Yorkshire accent. Hello, Erwin. How are you? How are you? Very well, and yourself? No, but middling. I don't like this cold weather. Erwin Bealby speaks a much older and stronger Yorkshire variety of English. What are you broke me this morning? You seem to have a fairish layer of stuff. Yeah, well, there's a variety, in there? This feels like a beak. Oh, well, I'll let you up and see you, shan't I? That is up. I'm middling a walk to the Irish, so I'll let you get on. See, see you. It's very difficult talking to folks' dialect because they don't know what you're talking about. I mean, you've only to take village that I live in. And there, uh, there's that many fresh folks come to live in come out at towns, you know, and what what we call off Cumdens. And the grand folks, but of course there isn't jobs for folks around here, and uh, they go to work at towns, in the city, in the York. And, uh, of course, if you were to talk to them a dialect, they wouldn't know what the world you were talking about. Erwin Bealby's conversation is riddled with Viking words, like adl, meaning to earn, you're going to uh, do a job because you want to earn some money. You want to addle some brass, as we would say in Yorkshire. Mun, it means you must. And laub, well, it means to jump. Laub toward the yacht, jump over the gate. A stop is a gate post, you see. Well, your, her bag, is the udder of a milking cow. Milk cow. To tear is emptying, pouring, or anything, you see. You tear your book, it into its aisle. It's a strainer, is sile. You sit on a little three-leg steel and get your head stuck into it hard cool side. By God, it was a grand job on a frosty morning. Erwin's surname, Bealby, is Norse, but he actually lives in Bolton, which is Anglo-Saxon. Names ending in ton, like Malton and Pocklington, are typically Saxon. So are place names ending in Wick, Ing, Ford, and Borough, as in Pulborough. I tell you, I've missed Mr. Vaughan, hasn't got a lot of names. Like the Viking names, Anglo-Saxon endings are also descriptive. Tun was an enclosure. Ham was a town. Stead meant a site. Stow, a place, often religious, and Wold meant a hill. Both the Anglo-Saxon and Viking place names of the Danelaw have travelled across the English-speaking world to places like Scarborough in Canada, Derby in Australia, to Boston in America, or Wellington, New Zealand. Here in Yorkshire, the postman's mixed bag is a clue to what happened to the language in England when Viking and Saxon lived side by side.